You can't go to bed yet. We haven't prayed. Thank you for tuning in to Extreme Witnesses for Christ with your host, Minister Tony Washington and the Soul Winning Team. Now Soul Winning on 1570 AM every Monday morning at 3.30 AM. Let's pray. Bible says and everything to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you father give us wisdom knowledge and understanding according to your word in the name of Jesus Christ we pray thank God amen and amen saints of God please go grab a pen and some paper for your notes as we bless you with this song God bless anybody want to press a little further anybody want to press a little further Somebody lift your voice into the Lord. Tell him, God, I want to press a little further. Press in your presence, Jesus. Come on, we might to get out of your way, but we want to press a little further. Amen. If I can just press. Press in your presence, behold the beauty of your face. If I can just press, press in your presence and never leave this place again. If I can just press, press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me. I will be whole, I'll still believe, I will just lay. Lay at your feet, for I will be whole. I'll still believe. I will just praise, praise out of your feet, right here in your presence. Somebody come on and tell the Lord you want to press a little deeper. Somebody tell the Lord if I could just press. If I can just press, press in your presence, press in your behold presence. the beauty of your face. Of your if face. I can just press, can just press. press in your presence, in your and never leave this place never again. Leave this place if I can just press, can just press. press in your presence, in your and presence. leave all my cares where they are. I will be whole, I still believe. I will just lay, lay at your feet, for I will be whole. I still believe. I will just praise, praise at your feet. I will be whole. I still believe. I will just lay, lay at your feet, for I will be whole. I still believe. I will just praise. Praise out of your feet right here. Somebody worship him. Be still one. Right here in your presence. Y'all, this is how what I found out about the Lord. You call me your own. So Lord, I give you. So Lord, I give you me. So 
Hey, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you for tuning in to Extreme Witnesses for Christ. I'm your host today, Brother Tony Washington. Listen, today we'll be talking about being blindsided. It's the title of this broadcast, Blindsided. And the reason for being is because, now, first of all, the definition for the word blind simply means you are unable to see, uh, unable to notice uh, anything in your surroundings, uh, uh, blind people rely strictly on their other senses, hearing, uh, uh, touch, uh, and smell, or taste. But today we're talking about being blindsided. Now, there are so many different uh, definitions of that word blind because there are, uh, we have a blind search. simply means that uh, it's a search without adequate directions or knowledge. Trying to find something that you may have misplaced or trying to find something that wasn't in the place you know, I mean, it's almost like um, what the FBI does or the CIA or, or the uh, or detectives, you know, trying to find uh, uh, information or evidence. You know, they're searching in the blind. Uh, then there's the there, there we deal with blind ads, you know, uh, commercials or ads where people are trying to sell things to us. And a blind ad simply means having certain information concealed or withheld intentionally. And then there's blind love. You know, when you're in love with someone that you know ain't no good, well, never probably would be any good. But you tell yourself, I love this person and I can change them and they will change. And everybody else will tell you, look, this person ain't right and ain't going to get no better. But you yet still remain and you still have hope. And that's blind love. Meaning, well, it's the same as blind faith, actually. Blind faith is, 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 is believing something can happen or will happen, even though you don't see it happening. So blind love and blind faith are the same, uh, pretty much, which simply means uh, disregarding evidence or you go against sound logic. Then there's a blind spot. Uh, anybody that's in the field of transportation, uh, truck drivers, uh, definitely, or people that like to drive understand what the blind spot is. A blind spot is something that's out of sight, uh, hard to see, is hidden from your view. Uh, that's why it's in the blind. That's why sometimes you see on your mirror, it might say these objects are a lot closer than they appear. You know what I mean? And all of us, whenever we drive anything, we have a blind spot. And then we have a blind destiny. Simply means not controlled by intelligence, meaning that it's a goal, a dream, or something that you're trying to pursue. In spite of what you have, in spite of what you know, you believe in yourself. And you say, you know what? I'm going to do this. It's a blind destiny. Then there, what in school we call blind letters. I mean, it's, it was, uh, it's something that's written that's ineligible. Uh, I mean, I can't read this. Or your teacher would tell you, this is scribble scratch. What is this? Go back and do this again. And then there's a blind landing. These are something that pilots use. That just simply means that uh, that's something that's guided only by flight instruments, uh, 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 as in a storm, you know, and, 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 and pilots use it all the time when they have to land and, and go off the, uh, off the instincts versus um, what the computer is telling them. Then there's what we call a blind wall. This is a, a construction term. Uh, it means that having no opening. This is something that architects and carpenters and construction workers use, meaning that you might want to pull a wall or a door or a window in a spot that doesn't have one, but you see it. And you say, you know what, I want to put a wall right here and then, or, or a door or a window. The, the, the term for that is used is called blind wall. And then which brings us to our broadcast today, which is called blind sided. Blindsided simply means uh, to attack someone from an unseen or unexpected direction. To be blindsided simply means to attack someone from an unseen or uh, unexpected direction, which brings us to what we'll be talking about today out of the book of Psalms, uh, verses uh, chapter 55, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, in the book of Psalms, chapter 12, verses 12 through, I'm sorry, chapter 55, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, for it was not 
an enemy that had reproached me. Then I could have borne it, meaning avoided that person. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. This scripture is simply talking about that you were approached by someone that you knew. That's the reason why you allow that person to approach you. Either you knew him or you thought you knew him. Or you wanted to get to know him, but there was not an enemy. An enemy is a non-friend. So this person that approached you was somebody that you felt that was friendly. And it says that you could, or had it been an enemy, you would have just avoided him. But it wasn't. Neither was he that hated me. So it wasn't somebody that was jealous of you or couldn't stand you or was out to get you, according to scripture, or you would have hid yourself from them as well. Now, verse 13 says, but it was thou, meaning you, a man, my equal, somebody I trust, my guide, somebody that I can believe in and follow, my acquaintance, someone that's close to you. So when you were approached, it wasn't by somebody you didn't know. It was by someone that you did know. Verse 14, we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company, meaning that we did things together. We hung out. Uh, we may talk. We may, I mean, whatever you did, it was always together, you know, as, as, as friends or a couple. And you went to the house of God together. Whenever you want to go worship, you, when you got to the house of God to worship, you went and found your friend if you could. And you want to be right next to them. You want to praise God with them. And that's what we're talking about today, being, being blindsided. Now, the reason why is because to be blindsided simply means you were to, for someone to catch you off guard. Now, the reason why I chose this because how many of us ever had someone that we believed in or trusted? A friend, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a niece, a nephew, an auntie, an uncle, a parent. You know what I mean? Somebody that you truly, truly trusted. And believed in and they approached you you like hey how you doing you so happy to see them you reach out to hug them or stick your hand out to shake their hand and they got a funny look on their face looking at you like you smell funny or you look funny and you looking like uh what's wrong with you now people used to say this all the time i don't know why they were like they'll say what's wrong with you i didn't sleep with you last night you know something like that might come out of your mouth and you looking like uh what's wrong what did i do well I'm just going to say it because I've been waiting to say it, so I'm going to say it. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And you sitting there looking like a piece of your mind. And they give you this long list of everything they have, all the everything that they have with the problems that they feel that they have with you. Everything that's wrong with you, they named it. I mean, by name. And you sitting there shocked. You stunned. You wonder. You, you dumbfounded. You you like, what? You in disbelief. And you sitting there scratching your head like, where's all this coming from? What did I do to you? I mean, everything that they're they saying right now is undeserving. You don't deserve it. It's uncalled for. It's not even necessary. And you wasn't even aware of it. And they give you this long list of stuff that they feel. What's wrong with you? I don't like this. I don't like this. And you did this, this, the other. And you was like, wow. Well, where's all this coming from? You my brother. You my sister. I mean, we were tight. What happened? What did I do to you that was so cold? Now, you, was in a, you, st you first of all, you're in a state of shock. Because what just happened was unexpected. It was sudden. And that's what blind being to be blindsided means. It's sudden. It's unaware. It's unannounced. You know what I mean? It's undeserving. You know what I mean? I mean it's all, it, it, it catches you off guard. When you got your guard down. So you sitting there like, wait, 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 wait. So the, the hood rose up in you. Or the street rose up in you. And you were thinking it. And in your mind, all these thoughts started going through your head. And you start telling yourself, I want to give you a piece of my mind now. So you sitting there looking and you're thinking, maybe you actually said it, but I don't know. But the first thing came to your mind was, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Okay, then you want to get down like that? And so you begin to call this person a knock needed devil, slew footed, snag a tooth, cross at it. You know what I mean? You just went there. You went to town on them. And then after you felt that wasn't enough, you took it even more personal than that. You went old school. And they went back and said something to you, and you turned back around and said, you know what? Yo, mama. I mean, you went old school on them. And they looked like my mama. Yeah, you heard me. Your mama's one. Your mama this. Your mama that. Your mama this. 
And you and I both know back in the day when we were younger, those was fighting words. So you have two adults now looking at each other, yelling at each other, screaming at each other. Now it ain't got personal because now we name calling each other. And this is somebody that you trusted. This is somebody that you believed in. This is somebody that you do, you, you, you do, I mean, you didn't went, you didn't went to jail for. You would have died for. You would have gave your kidney for. This is somebody you trusted, you loved. And that betrayed you. And you're shocked. It can come from anybody, from a sister, a brother, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, a pastor, anybody. And it leaves you in a state of shock, like, what am I? And then you you're thinking to yourself, like, Lord, now you know I don't believe in violence. But God, this booty whooping I'm about to issue out, Lord, you know it's justified. And then you haul off and slap the person. They haul off and slap you back. And then you go in your purse and get your knife. They go in their purse and pull out their pistol or they switchblade or they pepper spray. And now you're out there fighting like cats and dogs, whether saved or unsaved. Or you're telling yourself, you know what? I'm going to get the first lick. I'm going to bust your head to the white part. And you sitting there imagining all this and all this stuff, all these feelings and emotions had just built up because you were shocked. You were surprised. You were caught off guard. You were unaware. You know it was unnecessary and uncalled for. You were blindsided by something you wasn't even expecting, something that you didn't even know would even take place. And not only just that, being blindsided can happen in any area. It can come in death. When someone can die unexpected, where that death was you, you know, you, it was undeserving when someone's murdered, when someone's uh, beat to death or shot, killed. Now, we can deal with natural causes most of the time. But when someone is just completely murdered, shot, stabbed, beat, whatever the case may be, we know that's undeserving. We know it's uncaused for. And we know it's, it's, it's unnecessary. But maybe you were blindsided by a death and you're struggling right now to pull yourself back together. Because the person that died didn't deserve to die. Maybe you were blindsided in a relationship or in a marriage where you married someone that you thought that you loved, but only found out they didn't love you the way that you loved them. Or maybe you had a relationship with someone that you wanted to be in that you thought it was going to go somewhere, only found out it wasn't going anywhere. And then you found out that this person, this man that you thought was a man, well, really was a woman. Or you was about to marry a woman that really was a man. You were blindsided by something you wasn't expecting. Maybe it came in the form of a child. Maybe some harm has come into your child that was undeserving. You know what I mean? Maybe you were blindsided by your job. You went, you left work. You was in good standings. You come back, they're handing you a pink slip. Tell about you're fired. Or we're closing the door. I mean, being blindsided just simply means you're being caught off guard. It's something that happens to us that caught us in a situation when we least suspected. You know what I mean? Imagine, imagine walking up in Kmart. You know what I mean? You just smiling and strutting and you praising God and singing and you got a big old smile on your face. And somebody walk up to you and cuss you out, you mother so-and-so, so-and-so. How are you looking like, huh? I mean, that's what it means. It's just imagine that. Or somebody just walking up there spitting on you. You know what I mean? Which is nasty. You're like, uh-uh, you spit on me. Now we got now we got to fight. Well, I got to cut you. It's just being caught off guard. And it happens all the time. And people act like when they caught off guard, they get saved. And, 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 and a super, super sanctification kicks in. The devil shows up and says, ha. And you like, please. The Bible says, ha, uh, please. When stuff catch you off guard, you might slip and cuss. Or you might just cuss. You might fight. You might kick. You might, I'm telling you, you just might. You don't know. That's why devil, the devil, when he does things, is always unannounced, unaware. Because he's slick. He's sneaky. That's what he does. So what I'm saying is that when something pops up and you might behave in a way that you know that you're not used to, doesn't make you less saved or less holy or somebody that don't love God make you a bad person, you were caught off guard. When my mother died, boy, it told me apart. It took me a while to get myself together. Yeah, I love God with all my heart, but I was angry at God. I didn't want to hear nothing about the Bible. I didn't want to hear nothing about no church. Don't come telling me nothing about God. Explain to me why my mother died. That's what I want to hear. How can a good woman die? When I see people out here kidnapping, killing, raping, and less than you name it, God, God, my God, doing everything they, they can do to people, and they won't die. I mean, you can shoot them seven times and still won't die because God has put grace on their life. But then you get a good person that didn't do nothing to nobody, just happened, just happened to die. You got a lot of questions. You want to know why, 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 why? That's what you're asking yourself. 
you know, it because you were blindsided by it. And I was blindsided by that death. It was unexpected. You know what I mean? And so it took me time. It took months. It took years for me to get myself together. And I thank God he allowed me the room to get myself together because I didn't know I was hurt. You know what I mean? When you love someone in love and you get hurt, it takes time to bounce back. So don't when I talk about being blasted, I'm talking about being somebody sneaking up on you and catching you when you least suspect it. You don't know how you're going to react. You know what I mean? Because when someone catches you off guard, you just don't know. And here it is. We're talking about two people going to the house of God together. Obviously, it was friends because the enemy is a non-friend. So this person that you with is non-threatening. And they turn around and betray you. You're shocked. Or you call your brother. Or you call your sister. Or you call in a relative to get some support. And then they unload on you on how they don't like you. Or you unload on them. You know what I mean? It goes back and forth, forth and back. So being blindsided is what I'm saying is simply this. God wants to, uh, whenever we get blindsided, the best thing that, in my opinion, to do at that time, after you finished reacting to it, it's to come back to God and to say, look, I repent and apologize to the Lord. Let God know you didn't handle it right. You know what I mean? It don't make you less of a person if someone caught you of something or someone caught you off guard and you behave badly. It don't make you, you know what I mean? Listen, you, you, before you got saved, you were always giving by everybody that made you mad at the finger. So you you saved now. You got caught off guard. You just happened to get somebody to the finger. Now you feel like, oh, Lord. Why did I do that? But come back to God and say, God, look, I didn't know it caught me off guard. I, I know I, I should have been, a, you know, I shouldn't have gave the person a finger. I apologize. Let me get myself together. I go back and get that thing right with the person. That's because that's what it's all about. And the devil is constantly doing that. That's why we at odds with each other. You know what I mean? Family, friends, churches, pastors, because we've been blindsided on every side. Instead of recognizing and realizing who's doing it, we're fighting each other. It's the devil. The Bible says he comes to sow discord among brethren meaning discord taking away peace he takes peace out of your home out of your life out of your ministry out of your church off your job he removes it and he does it by blindsiding us with things that he know would tick us off that he knows it's gonna make us mad listen come back to god be healed of that because i'm telling you when you get blindsided depending on how deep it gets how bad it gets it will leave you bitter it will make you angry. It will leave you unforgiving. It will make you hateful. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Every time you see that person, you'll be wanting to throw up. You'll be, you know what I mean, uh, turning your head, crossing your eyes. You know what I mean? My God, you don't want to live like that because that's bondage. Don't allow the devil to continue to trap you by something that happened to you that caught you off guard. May today be the day that God turned it around. And we're going to go in and pray. I want, I'm a, 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 listen, let's, just, let's pray right now. Father God, first of all, we just want to say thank you. The Bible says, and everything to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God, we got to be honest with ourselves. We can't lie to you because you know all, you see all, and why should I sit here and try to hide it? God, when we were blindsided, we were upset. We cussed, we screamed, we said things we shouldn't may have said because we felt at that time we were done wrong. You know it wasn't, right? We felt if we gave the person a pumpkin head, we would be justified, plus it would make us feel better. So we stepped out into our feelings and our emotions, and we weren't following the Spirit. But God, forgive us of the sin, this act of violence, this, this thing of revenge. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us for what we have done in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to regroup. Help us to refocus. God, give us back on track. Get our minds right, our hearts right, because we want to live. We want to do the will of God. We want to serve you, my God, my God, because you, the Bible told us if we regard iniquity in our hearts, you won't hear us. Free us, free us, free us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Because, God, if we don't get free, we might just go back to drinking. We might just go back to smoking and doing drugs. We might just backslide from this thing because we got blindsided by someone we trusted, believed, and loved. Free us today, God. Give us the mind, the heart, and the will to stay strong, to stay hopeful, to stay with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we don't know what to say, so we're crying out mercy. Have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We want to live. We don't want to die. We don't want to give up. We don't want to walk away. We need you to work this thing out in the name of Jesus Christ, God, so I can go back in love for what love and kindness have I drawn thee. We need your love. The love is the first fruit of the Spirit. God, help us to walk in love, live in love, operate in love in the name of Jesus Christ. Then we can deal with betrayal. 
Then we can deal with being deceived. Then we can deal with not God being approached in a negative way. Then we can deal with it. But we need the heart of God, the mind of God. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, God. Free our minds, free our hearts, and get our emotions under a check. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, God. Thank God, thank God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, I'm telling you, because when you're blindsided and caught off guard, you'll say anything. You might just do anything. Listen, you got to trust God. Don't, don't ever put no confidence in your flesh. In your flesh dwells no good thing. You would do anything, anything, when somebody catch you off guard. And I, I'm not saying that when you re, uh, return the favor back to them, you're not justified. Maybe you are. But what I'm saying is that you don't want to get in the car or reacting, you know what I mean, without thinking when you're blindsided by something. Listen, maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You want this opportunity to get saved. You know what I mean? Listen, maybe you left God. Maybe you left the church. Maybe you left your family. Maybe you left your friends because you were blindsided by something that you know uh, wasn't right that was done to you. This is your day to come back to God. This is your day to get yourself right and allow God to come back into your heart. Listen, God didn't do it. It was that person. You know how people are. I mean, God, I mean, you got, you know, we ignorant. I mean, that's just the bottom line. We say stuff we shouldn't say. We do stuff we shouldn't do. But don't allow this thing that was done to you, don't allow that to separate you from God. Come back. Come back. Come back. God loves you. God is concerned about you. All right. Read, read this prayer to me. What the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, uh, uh, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Repeat this prayer to me, if you will. Dear God, I confess that I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I truly am sorry for my sins, all of my sins, all the sins I know about, all the sins I don't know about, and all the sins I don't want to talk about. Forgive me, Lord. Uh, cleanse me, Lord. I humbly ask you to accept me as your son or as your daughter. I believe that Jesus died on the cross in my place. Then he rose again for my salvation. In faith, I accept from you the gift of eternal life and with your help i will serve you as long as i live i pray in jesus name amen amen and amen thank you for tuning us in listen i hope this broadcast was a blessing to you today um you can go to our website we have more i think and i believe will bless you our website is extreme witnesses uh, for Christ.com, the number four extreme witnesses, put an ES on the end of witness, the number four, Christ.com. And be blessed. I love you with the love of God. And go with God, and God will go with you. God bless. Give the highest praise, yeah. Thank you. You've been the proud guest of Extreme Witnesses for Christ Ministries, heard every Monday at 3.30 a.m. right here on AM 1570. Please send all prayer requests and testimonies to P.O. Box 209053, Chicago, Illinois 60620, or email us at extremewitnesses4 at yahoo.com. Extreme Witnesses, the number four, at yahoo.com. Please, no donations at this time. And be sure to tune in next week at the same time, the same station, right here on 1570 AM. God bless.